Hello everyone, welcome back to the show. My name is Mike, this is my whiteboard, and today we're gonna to be talking about liquidity, and specifically the practical importance of liquidity when we're talking about options trading. So if you've missed any of the liquidity segments I had previously done, I covered the bid-ask spread and the importance of that, as well as volume and open interest in separate segments. So if you missed those, you can search for those on the search bar at the top of Tasty Trade just by clicking on the magnifying glass, or you can click on the Find Shows link at the top of the page and then scroll on to Mike and his whiteboard and you'll see them there. But today we're going to review some of those things and we're going to talk about really the practical importance and really why these things are so important when we're trading. So let's just get a quick review of the liquidity indicators that we look at. Number one being the bid ask spread. So when we're looking at a big a bid, bid ask spread, we're basically talking about the difference between where I can buy an option or stock, which is known as the ask price, and the difference between that and the sell where I can sell an option or stock, and that would be the bid. So we're looking at the spread between these two numbers, and the smaller the spread, the better for liquidity reasons, and the wider the spread, it is going to be a little bit harder to obtain that fair market price, but if the market is liquid, then we can go ahead and do that most of the time, like in something like SPX, where the bid-ask spread is a little bit wider, but it is frequently traded, so we can route something or route an order for the mid price where we can normally get filled. But we'll talk about that in just a sec. Another thing we want to review is volume and open interest. So when we're looking at volume and open interest, we're basically looking at the number of contracts that are traded that day, as well as the number of contracts that are open. So when we're talking about volume, that is specifically the number of shares or contracts traded that day. And when we're looking at open interest, this is just the number of open contracts in the market. So we're gonna talk a little bit about which one I prefer to look at in terms of liquidity, but why they're both important in the long run. So again, the bid ask spread is a liquidity indicator that basically shows us how easily we can get into and out of a market at a fair price. And again, the more narrow that bid ask spread, the better. Wider bid ask spreads usually indicate an illiquid marketplace. And when we're looking at volume and open interest, that is on a per strike basis when we're looking at the options market. So different strikes in different expirations will have different volume and open interest. And we also look at the volume of shares traded for that underlying if it does have an options market. One thing to note though, is that the two aren't necessarily correlated or related at all. One one underlying could have a very liquid stock market, but it might not have a very liquid options market at all. And while one underlying might not have a very liquid stock market, it could have a very liquid options market. So there's a few things that we wanna talk about, but first let's dive right into the bid ask spread and we'll talk a little bit more about why this is so important. So I've got two examples here, and I'm gonna show you the difference and why it's so important to get that narrow bid ask spread. So we're gonna first walk through an example of a 50 cent wide spread, and then we're gonna compare it to a penny wide spread, which is the most liquid that we can possibly get. And a lot of times when we're looking at SPY, which is the S&P 500 ETF, we're going to see that penny wide bid ask spread, which is an amazing thing to even look at. So when we're looking at that 50 cent wide spread, there's a few things to keep in mind. If we remember, the bid price is the price where I can look to sell something, and the ask price is the price where I can look to buy something. So let's assume for a second that I can't get filled at the mid price or anywhere in between these options. So normally, if we're dealing with an illiquid marketplace, we're not going to really be able to get filled in between these levels here. If we're dealing with an illiquid marketplace, we might be able to get filled on the ask or we might be able to get filled on the bid. So let's assume that we're dealing in somewhat of an illiquid marketplace and we've got a pretty wide spread here. So let's say I just want to I'm doing something super speculative, not something we normally do, but just for this example, let's say I'm looking to buy a call. So I wanna buy a call in this underlying and I need to buy it at the ask price. Because we don't have that liquidity and I can't purchase it anywhere in between this range, let's say I need to buy that call at the $2 mark. So I buy the call at $2 and that means I have to put up $200 for that trade and a few days go by and the bid ask is still the same but my assumptions changed. I bought a call, I thought that underlying was going to go up but for whatever reason my assumptions changed and I wanna get out of that trade. So what happens when I get out of the trade? Well, if I bought an option to open the trade, 
To close that trade, I need to sell it back to the market. So if I purchased it for $2 and I now need to close that trade, and assuming it cannot get filled anywhere in between these prices, again, the bid price is where I need to look to sell something. So if I bought an option at $2 and I now have to sell it back to the market for $1.50, I instantly lose 50 cents or $50. So that is why we don't deal with big big wide bid ask spreads unless we can get filled in the mid price or unless that market is liquid enough to where we might be able to get filled in that mid price region. So when I'm talking about the mid price, I'm just referring to the difference between the two. So the mid price would be somewhere around $1.75. If I was dealing in a higher priced underlying like SPX, which does have pretty wide spreads, but it is very liquid, I might have been able to route my opening order to buy a call at $1.75. Chances are I would probably get filled, even though the bid is at $1.50 and $2. If we have liquid options in that specific strike, and there's a lot of people trading that specific strike, I can probably route the order for the mid price of $1.75, and if I wanted to get out of it and nothing had changed over the next few days, I can probably route that same order to close for $1.75 as long as that strike is still liquid. So that's the importance of the wide spread and why we don't really deal with those wide spreads, especially in illiquid markets. I might be able to get filled on the ask and be a part of that trade, but if I want to get out, I might have to sell it on that bid price, which you can see there's a huge reduction in value and instantly gives me a loss. So what about this one penny widespread? Well, let's go through that same example. Let's say I wanted to buy a call at the ask price of $1.76. Okay, so I buy this, this call at $1.76. And a few days go by, nothing's changed, but my assumptions changed, so I wanna get out. Unlike this spread here, where I purchased it for $2 and I sold it out back to the market for $1.50, resulting in a 50 cent loss, with this one penny widespread, I can route it for $1.76 to open, and if I want to close it, I can route it for $1.75 to close. That's a one penny loss as opposed to a 50 cent loss. That's 50 times less of a loss than in this situation than in this one here. And another thing to note is that even though there's really no mid price, since this is so super thin and it's a one penny wide, what I could do is select whatever price I wanted and most likely I'd be able to get filled. As we know, markets do move. So even if I wanted to buy it at maybe $1.75, I could put in that order at $1.75 and it might take a little longer to fill, but usually the market will bounce a little up and down and I might be able to get filled at that $1.75. And if I wanted to close it, later in time immediately, I could probably easily sell it for that same value pretty instantly. So that's the power of the bid ask spread and why it's so important to make sure that we're dealing with very narrow bid ask spreads. And even if we do have a wide bid ask spread, it's important to realize that if it is wide, and if it's wide in a higher price underlying, sometimes it can be okay, as long as that strike is heavily traded. If a strike is heavily traded, that usually means there's a lot of activity going on in between the bid and ask, and I can usually route it for the mid price, which gives me that same synthetic feeling of the fair market price. So right here, I'm pretty much guaranteed to get that fair market price because it's only a penny wide, but if I was dealing with a wider bid ask spread and the option market was liquid, I can route it for that mid price and probably get filled on my way in and on my way out. So let's talk a little bit about volume and open interest on the next slide here. So the very first thing I wanna point out is that volume shows you the number of people that are trading the instrument. Regardless of whether we're looking at stock or options or futures, it's going to give you an indication of how many people are trading that instrument that day. And for me, this is the greatest indicator of activity because of the fact that it's showing you exactly what has happened that day. It's not giving you any theoretical assumptions. It's showing you all the transactions that had happened that day. And of course, the higher number there is in that volume, the more activity there will be. So if you look at certain strikes on an option chain, you'll see some strikes are heavily traded. There's a lot of volume going on there. And you might see some other strikes that aren't as heavily traded. And one really good example for this is trading a spread. So if I'm trading a spread, let's say I'm selling something like a put spread. That's two points wide, and let's say I've got two different strikes there, two points wide. 
One of the strikes might have a ton of activity. It might have a ton of volume, a lot of activity. I can easily get filled there. But when I look at maybe the defining risk aspect, two, just two strikes away, if I look at the volume and open interest there, maybe it's close to zero. The problem with this is that the brokerage won't fill the spread unless both of the legs are attributed for and they're both accounted for. So even though one strike might be super liquid, if the other strike is not, it's going to prevent me from being filled. Even if my price is right at where the market is trading or even if my price is better than where the market is trading, if no one's trading one of those legs, even if someone is trading the other leg or if there's a lot of people trading the other leg, we need to remember that both of those legs need to have activity for me to be filled on that spread. So that's what creates a lot of issues with getting in trades, but especially getting out of trades later when we're looking at spreads and defined risk. It's just another reason why naked options are so much easier to maneuver because we're only dealing with that one option. So we can clearly pick out which option strike we want to deal with. And if it's liquid enough, we'll easily be able to get in and out. So open interest is another indication and it's also very interesting, but for me, it's not as great of an indicator as volume. And we'll talk a little bit about why. So open interest basically shows you that people have contracts open. It does show you the open contracts available in the market, but it doesn't mean that they're actually trading them right then and there. It just shows you the open markets or open contracts in the market. So someone might have an open contract and they might not be looking to trade it at all, but it would still be showing up in that open interest section. So even though there might be a strike or a strike in certain expirations that has a lot of open interest, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be traded that day. And for that reason, it does give us an aspect of liquidity, but I don't think it's as powerful as the volume is because of the fact that volume really is showing you the transactions that day, which means there is definitely activity. If volume is high, there has been and there is a lot of activity there. Whereas if open interest is high, that just means that there is a lot of contracts. Now, I don't want to throw open interest totally out because if there are a lot of contracts in a certain expiration cycle, usually those contracts will be traded sometime during that expiration cycle, unless they're being held through expiration in which they wouldn't be. But open interest basically gives us that view into the future and allows us to see just how many contracts are open. So if I wanted to trade at some point in time, there's probably a good chance that I can trade at a fair market price if there's a lot of open interest, which would eventually turn into volume once that transaction is created. So this has been a lot of information, but we can wrap it all up with some takeaways for you. The very first takeaway is that being stuck in a trade or having to exit at a terrible price is the worst of all time. It's the worst thing you can that you can do, especially when you have a trade that has gone your way and you see profit, but you can't get out of it because you're stuck, because you have one leg or multiple legs that are illiquid. It's not a fun situation to be in, which is why we always follow liquidity and why liquidity is king to us. If we only deal with underlyings that have a lot of liquidity and we select strike these strikes that we trade strategically, that allows us to follow that liquidity and have that sustained liquidity throughout the trade. In things like SPY, that's probably the best example you can look at when you're looking at an options chain or even just looking at this, the shares that are traded in that vehicle each day. Being stuck in a trade when we're dealing with underlyings that are not liquid is going to put us in an uncomfortable situation a lot of times, which is why we always stick with the liquidity. Getting filled at a mid price is more probable in liquid markets. So I keep referring back to SPX. If you look at SPX, it is a very high priced underlying. It's going to be priced just a bit higher than the S&P futures slash ES. And when you look at the option market, you'll see a lot of activity there, but because the underlying is highly priced, the options are pretty expensive. So you won't see that penny wide bid ask spread, even though there's a lot of activity. You might see a 20 cent or 30 cent wide bid ask spread, but just because the bid ask is large in that instrument, doesn't mean that you have to get filled at the bid or have to get filled at the ask. Since there's a lot of activity there, we can route orders at the mid price, which is just the difference between the bid and the ask, and we can see if we can get filled. And more likely than not, especially with my experience trading SPX, I'm usually able to get filled when I'm selecting those strikes very carefully and looking at the most liquid strikes. When I route something for the mid price, I usually get filled pretty quickly. 
And last but not least, high volume usually brings the bid ask spread closer together. So when I talked about the bid ask spread on my previous whiteboard, I was talking about how when there's a high amount of volume, it can usually bring that bid ask spread together. Because if you think about what volume is, it's basically people agreeing on a certain price and creating trades because of that. So when we have a lot of activity and a lot of volume, you see a lot more agreeance on someone that's selling an option compared to someone that's buying the option. So the more volume and activity there is, generally you'll see that bid ask spread get much more narrow, where we have that much more fair market price without having to guess in between that mid price region, where when there's not a lot of activity, that usually indicates a disparity between the bid price and a disparity between the ask price between these two people. So when there's a larger bid ask spread, it's usually an indicator of low liquidity. And on the flip side, when we have a narrow bid ask spread, it's usually an indicator of high liquidity. But there is there are instances in higher priced products such as SPX where just because they're very highly priced, they are still liquid and we still can get out at a fair market price, but there might be a little bit bigger bid ask spread just because those options are highly priced. So it's important to understand the differences between these three scenarios. So thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed this segment. If you've got any questions or feedback, shoot me an email at one of these emails here, or you can Mike on Twitter. Stay tuned though, we've got Jim Schultz coming up.